Hey everybody, how's it going? The Johnny Cage here, welcoming you back for more Let's Play Pokemon Leaf Green. Last time we left off, we beat Sabrina, and now we made a beeline for the Cinnabar Islands, and here we're going to go through the Pokemon Mansion so that we were able to get into the Cinnabar Gym. And a couple episodes ago, I asked you guys if you had any questions for me, kind of do a little Q&A in these final episodes of Pokemon that I have left, giving out shoutouts, doing some question and answer, and uh, b Radish, or Turnips Bro Radish, sorry, I can't believe I got your name wrong, um, he wanted to know uh, all about Japan. And he wanted to know uh, why I was there and what it was like being there. And I was there for 10 days last spring, um, spring of 2010. And um, I went there because my school uh, required that I have an internship credit or um, a study abroad credit to graduate. So I had already had an internship, but I didn't use that credit to like apply towards this. And I had, I had also taken three years of Japanese in college. So I uh, kind of explained it you know, to my parents that they had this offered and I need the credit anyways. And uh, it was a, kind of an expensive trip. All in all, it costs about $4,000, which believe me, if I wouldn't have done this through school, I could have probably done for $3,000, maybe less. So on average, that's what's going to cost you to just have like a good time, maybe just in Tokyo and Japan, uh, about 3000 bucks, And you can have a pretty good time, I would say. Um, but, uh, so I needed the credit, so I decided to go there, and it took place over the spring break, and, um, so let's see, what can I say about Japan? Well, we got in Tokyo, um, was it Shinagawa, I believe was where we were staying at, that was the area we were staying at, and, um, I have a whole bunch of videos on this on my YouTube channel, if you guys want to check it out too, that will be more in depth, more, much more than this, uh, this, like, 15 minute video will be, that's for sure, but, um, so we got there, and... My initial reactions were, well, first of all, I was so tired. The plane ride, was, I think it was like a 16-hour plane trip, which was crazy. But uh, the plane was awesome because they had it set up so you could watch tons of movies. I don't know how many of you have taken international flights, but you can watch tons of movies at will. Um, they have video games. You could challenge different people in the plane to Tetris. You could just, like, it would kind of like come up on their monitor, like, this uh, passenger or whatever has like challenged you to a game at Tetris. Do you accept? So that was so funny. It was like playing like a video game and you, you hit start and it's like a new challenger is approaching or something like that. So uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Um, I was there with 20 other people, all of varying different degrees um, of knowing Japanese, interested in Japanese. Some of them were like older people that were going for their masters. They were like around 30 years old and they just kind of wanted to do this as kind of a vacation almost. Um, Let's see, what else can I tell you? As soon as we got there, everything around us was really Japanese, or not really Japanese, really American. Literally, uh, you know, it was like a hotel area. It was a touristy kind of area. So they had stuff that was very uh, welcoming for tourists. Like, right outside of our hotel, there was a TGI Friday's and an Outback Steakhouse. So, again, it gives you an idea of, uh, of what they had around where we initially were. But, ooh, look, Puff! Puff's evolving into a Dragonite! Yay! Um... So that kind of gives you an idea of all that. And um, our first day there, I'm guessing we have to kind of like speed up this whole story. I could talk for hours about this if you met me in real life and wanted to talk about it. But um, so uh, our first day there, uh, me and a couple other people, oh, by the way, out of the 20 people, only three of us could speak Japanese, including myself. So that was really interesting, having to kind of like navigate myself and these two other people into groups so that there was at least one Japanese speaker at all times with them. Because, um, you know, it's important. It's, it's, worth knowing Japanese if you're going to go, and people will tell you differing stories about how much Japanese you really need to know to be in Japan. Um, people will say that they look down upon people that don't speak Japanese, you know, the nationalism and all that, but um, I, I found that people there, kids there, start learning English generally around the same time that we learn uh, in America. We learn something like French or Spanish around middle school age, um, so anyone there that was like our age, they could speak pretty good English, you know, good enough that you could hold small conversations with them, ask them questions about uh, where you wanted to go, if you needed to find something in particular, you know, the only time I had to speak a lot of Japanese was in bars, because like I said, I was there with a bunch of older people, and I didn't plan on doing like a lot of go going out and drinking, I wasn't thinking that was going to be like a big thing that we were going to do, because um, this was a business seminar, you know, it was a study abroad trip, so we were going to different businesses um, a majority of the days, probably like six out of the ten days. Uh, we were there, we were going to different businesses and meeting up with them early in the morning, so I didn't think we were going to go out and drinking, but all these, like, you know, guys were treating this like it was a vacation more than a study abroad program, so uh, they were awesome, though, because 
because every night I'd be like, you know, I'm just because college guy. I don't have much money. I think I had um, I had a grand total of seven hundred dollars with me that I had to get converted into uh, yen. Anyways, so the currency ratio was really crappy. So I really only got like. Uh, I only got I don't know somewhere like six twenty five probably the equivalent of like six hundred and twenty five bucks when you did the the you exchanged the money, so there was that and I was like yeah no I'd love to go out drinking with you guys but I just can't really afford it. and they're like screw it I don't care just come out with us man we're going drinking we'll pay for it we don't even care and literally they paid for a lot of just like extracurricular fun stuff for for me and like the other like undergrads to do it was so much fun they were such awesome people and I still uh, get stay in contact with as many of them as I can today um, but yeah uh, bars were the only time I had to speak a lot of Japanese and bars were really interesting too because um, you had to pay uh, pretty much every bar I went to there was a cover charge so just to sit down you had to pay a certain amount of money and since they're so small I guess it's because they were so small um, there was normally a time limit I think just about every single one of them had a time limit on how long you could stay there so most of them were only like two hours you could stay at a bar before you had to move on to another place um, that and on top of that most bars closed at midnight which is pretty unusual compared to um, in Europe or in America uh, but the only place you could go after midnight to get uh, alcohol would be a karaoke place. And we did do karaoke one night, and those karaoke lounges are gigantic. And you just pick up the phone, and that was another time when we had to use Japanese. We had to like place orders over the phone in the karaoke <laughs> uh, karaoke bar, and you know, get them to constantly bring us up beer because there were like 15 of us that went out for karaoke that night and constantly ordering beer left and right. But um, it was so much fun. Uh, we had such a good time with that. The first day there, I'll try to be, you know, linear with my story. First day we were there, we went to Shibuya. And Shibuya is kind of like a department store kind of a, a district. The thing you should know about Tokyo, and I honestly didn't even really know this until I went there, and I had studied Japan for a number of years, that Tokyo is really just more or less one giant um, circle. If you look at their CTA, like if you live in a big city, probably like a CTA map where the trains will take you. Um, I live in Chicago, so you know I'm very used to driving around, getting around on trains. Um, and theirs is just like a big circle. So whenever you hear something, you know, things are broken down into prefectures, as you probably heard before. So if you hear them talk about Shinjuku or Shibuya or Akihabara, um, you know, they're all different kind of sections that make up Tokyo. Um, because Tokyo in itself is actually, it is a real place, but there's nothing really there. So it's just kind of Tokyo ended up being the name of it. Um, but, um, I've got to say, well, before I run out of time, I'm more than halfway through this video, and I'm, I'm, I'm just starting out with my story, right? So Shibuya wasn't a lot like, um, it wasn't that different, you know, from America. Like any average like, city in America, I didn't think. It was kind of a downer, to be honest with you. My first day there was a little bit of a downer. Like, it just, something just didn't feel very Japanese about it. I don't know what it was, but, um, you know, I just like, I say, like, oh man, this is kind of, kind of disappointing, to be honest with you. I don't know, that's just how I kind of felt about it initially. Um, but then, you know, enough of the, the downsides, because the very next day we went to Akihabara. And if you've never heard of Aki, Akihabara, my god, Google this place, because this is the, it's also known as Electric City, because this is where they have all the stuff that nerdy American guys like myself like. You've got your electronics district, you've got giant billboards for anime and video games, you've got um, chicks walking around. Um, at every intersection dressed up as, as maids and schoolgirls and other stuff that looks like it belongs in anime trying to get you to go into what they have there called maid cafes super popular and the best way I've explained it is the Japanese equivalent to a Hooters in America but instead of there being uh, you know chicks with, that show a lot of cleavage you know attractive girls like that um, they're dressed up as maids and you kind of feel perverted going into one of these places. You really do. Um, when we got in there, we had to take an elevator up there, and the elevator was like plastered to the wall, was porn all over this elevator, which is kind of weird. And we were with quite a few girls, too. They're kind of weirded out by all that. Um, but it was funny because apparently this particular maid cafe was famous because a few years before that, the Backstreet Boys, back when they were still a popular group, had been there. So that was kind of funny. But you go in there and you kind of just enjoy the atmosphere. You don't buy a lot because stuff is really expensive. I, I remember very vividly getting a Pepsi and it cost $6, the equivalent of $6 US dollars. So really expensive. We were just kind of there enjoying the atmosphere, kind of. We got a, we took a picture, uh, took a couple pictures with the girls, which you have to pay for, by the way. But uh, we were there with a, a few Japanese people from a school that we had been to the day before. 
Um, it's like it was like an international studies kind of school, so all the guys could uh, speak really good English, and even those that couldn't, I could speak Japanese to them. And man, we had so much fun with them. They just like showed us around all these all these cool places and just told us everything about like their life and how they wanted to come to America and all that. And I'm like, dude, screw America. It's like we have nothing. This is awesome. All the crazy stuff that you have here, man. Uh, like, beer vending machines, beer vending machines do exist, and I had been looking one for one for three days, and, um, you know, so do used panty machines, apparently, but, uh, we didn't find any of those ever, but, um, they do have beer, beer vending machines in the hotel we stayed at, and all you had to do was be tall enough to be able to push that button, and it couldn't have been more than five feet off the ground, and, bam, you can get a beer, just like that, um, so, but believe me, I was hardly ever in the hotel room, we were always out going around to different places, um, after we were in Tokyo, and Tokyo is amazing, by the way. I would suggest for a, it's definitely a first timer that's never been um, outside the country, never been to Japan, just schedule a trip to Tokyo and stay in Tokyo because there's so much to do there. Um, there's so many cool things to see. Uh, Akihabara, seriously, I could have spent uh, days there on end alone. Just so, so cool. Um, arcades everywhere. You know, we spend a lot of time in arcades. Pachinko. Pachinko is honestly the loudest thing I've ever heard in my life outside of, a like, a metal concert. And I listen to a lot of, like, hardcore, hard rock metal kind of music. And, man, those places are just filled with smoke. Super loud. Super, super loud. I just couldn't believe it. Um, I really wanted to play it, but honestly, I was really intimidated by it because I didn't even know how to play it, and I didn't know how to go up to them and like buy this, I'll buy, you know, buy like a basket of the metal balls that you need to play the game. So I was like, uh, let's let's forget about this. Let's move on to something else. But uh, uh, that was really fun. I love Tokyo so much. We also went to Kyoto, uh, went to Nara, um, we went to Osaka. And um, Kyoto's great, but you have to really be able to appreciate the culture and the history and, you know, the mythology and, and all their legends and folklore and whatnot. And uh, it's just something that I, I, I try to wrap my head around, but it's so hard. It's so it's so deep and immense that, it, you know, it could take ages to learn all of that. So Kyoto, beautiful place, but unless you're Japanese, I just, I honestly think it's, it's kind of hard to really appreciate it. Um, Osaka was like the Chicago of Japan. When we got there, those were the only two days out of the ten that it happened to rain out. So it had that nice depressing kind of Gotham City feel to it already. Um, and we went to a Kobe beef restaurant and we got some real, honest to goodness, Kobe beef, which was awesome. That stuff is amazing. And then one of the cool things they do afterwards is they take all the gristle from the steak and mix it up with some eggs and make you like a Kobe beef gristle omelet. So fatty and greasy, but it's so, so good. Oh my. Oh, but, um... So uh, that was kind of Osaka. We also went to a, a sushi conveyor belt restaurant, which actually they have more and more popping up in America of those, but they're really fun. Um, if you ever get a chance to find one, check it out, because they're really, really cool. Um, other than that, you know, I really want to get back there one of these days. I guess this video is kind of coming to an end, so kind of wrap it up with, I really want to get back there one of these days. And if you want to go, go. Um, if you're intimidated to set up the whole schedule yourself and try to plan it yourself, uh, I know a lot of people are younger that watch this. It's Pokemon after all. But uh, if you're in college, maybe about to go into college, uh, see if your school offers trips like that for study abroad and see if you can get to Japan because I think that's the best way for someone that's not been outside of their home country before to, to go about it. It was really fun. It was, it was just everything I could have hoped for and more. Um, and I'm definitely going to get back there one of these days whenever I get some money. But uh, until then, guys, that's kind of my uh, my Japan trip in a nutshell. If you want to hear more about it, feel free to ask me some questions. Uh, feel free to leave me any other questions that you want to as this LP comes to an end. But this has been the Johnny Cage, guys. Please subscribe, like, comment if you have not, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.